late season fertilizer in corn, soybeans, and wheat. Obviously, people talk a lot about wheat and corn, but we wanna spend a little time. Let's start with soybeans, Darren, because that's where everybody is just forgetting about it, I think. I don't know if I would term this late season fertility. I would term this mid-season at best. Well, but, whatever you, whatever you late, want to call it. Late season, I'm thinking about the <laughs> reproductive stages sure. on these crops. Fair enough. Now, we're talking about this because you can still drive through the field. If you can still drive through the cornfield and do an application yourself, you can still do some side. Yeah, but let's talk about the soybeans. That's where we wanted to start here. With soybeans, you can do the same thing. And people ask all the time, the first question is, does my soybean plant produce enough nitrogen? No, no soybean plant in the world produces enough nitrogen for itself to maximize yield. But don't forget, there's all kinds of nitrogen in the soil already. There's nitrogen breaking down, getting released from organic matter mineralization. And a lot of times that's enough. But in some cases, especially when you have adverse weather conditions, you've had some flooding, you haven't planted soybeans very often, Often, have extreme drought. You have high or low soil pH. There are a lot of issues, a lot of factors that might enter in that you might want to put on a little bit more nitrogen. The right timing to do that, if I could have any one time, would be at first flower. If I can get some rain shortly after that, then that nitrogen can get into the plant. But just understand at the flowering timings, flowering and early pod, that's where the plant needs lots of nitrogen. It's also taking in lots of P and K. And a lot of people also don't realize that the amount of potassium that a 60 bushel soybean crop needs, just grain removal only, let's start there, is way more than what a corn crop needs for grain removal only. So in total, it takes a lot of pounds of potassium if you're going to raise a good soybean crop. When you think about this side dress timing, and we're talking about, you know, relatively early in the season, again, we're trying to get out there while we can still drive through the field before those soybeans have bushed in and filled the rows. And, you know, we're talking about having a little bit of space. If you've got a 10 inch row uh, or a seven and a half inch row on beans, that's pretty tight. We can't really do much as far as placing fertilizer down into the soil. But when we're a little bit wider, when we're a 20 inch row, 30 inch row and so forth and wider, we can certainly do this. Now, we're also concerned about pruning roots. That's another topic that we can get into. But just to finish up on Brian's point, we aren't just talking about putting nitrogen out. We may be talking about putting some more P and some more K out there. Those nutrients, especially if you're using a dry fertilizer like a MAP or a DAP, it's gonna take a little time for those nutrients to become available. And also, even if you're using a liquid product like a Pro Germinator or a Sure K or calibrate, something like that, those fertilizers need a little bit of moisture to get into that root system. Right. So we want to put them down into the soil because P and K, whether it's in a liquid or dry formulation, they don't move down through the soil profile with water very well at all. We want to put them down into the soil and then it's going to take a little bit of time to get them available and into the crop. So we want to do it about this timing so they start to become available by the time we get into those reproductive stages and have such a high demand for nutrients. In other words, air on the early side rather than on the late side, that buys you more time to get rain. Now, Darren mentioned N, P, and K, but let's not forget about sulfur and micronutrients. Those are also important, and I can just tell you in our own operation, on corn and on soybeans, certain years we are putting some on later on. Now, you can foley your feed if you want to. I guess our main topic today is laying it on the ground or injecting it into the ground. One way or the other, we like seeing some of those nutrients get out there. Foley your feeding, you can only put a small amount of nutrients on. The leaves can only absorb a small amount, so you'd have to be out there on a very regular basis. But like in wheat, for example, we'll stream bar wheat where we have little streams of nitrogen that are getting dropped out. And when we do that, we're also putting on sometimes some micronutrients, definitely some sulfur every time, and occasionally some P and K. So these are just some things that we want you to be thinking about. And how you know whether or not you should do this is by looking at your soil tests, seeing what your soil fertility program already was, and then taking plant tissue samples. Now back to that root pruning. There's a lot of difference out there in the way that farmers are doing side dress, whether it's doing kind of heavy incorporation or heavy uh, field cultivation. Others are just using a coulter and trying to inject some nutrients or, or a knife and trying to inject some nutrients without doing lots of tillage. Our goal is to do the lowest amount of tillage as we possibly can because anytime you're doing some heavy tillage out there during the season, you're releasing moisture. And if you're in a, a situation where you're normally too dry rather than too wet, chances are you probably don't want to give up a lot of that moisture so, right in the middle so of the season. So what Darren is saying is all we're doing is running a coulter out there in between the rows in 30 inch rows on our farm in corn and soybeans and that works quite well. And above all else, the main thing that we want you to be thinking about today is trying some new things out in your farm. Trying some side dressing, trying some late season application of nitrogen, soybeans or wheat. And it doesn't have to be a lot, but just a little bit. And a lot of farmers have been doing this and finding there's yield gain there. 
Split applying the nitrogen usually allows you to put on less nitrogen, so it's again better for the environment and better for your pocketbook. Multiple applications of fertilizer are generally a good idea. It's also the same thing with weed control. We want to take a couple of shots to try and get our weed of the week. We'll explain coming up next.